Welcome everyone to the newest installment of Hidden Variables. It's a podcast where we try to explore the different people and discoveries and ideologies and all kinds of wonderful things that help hold our beautiful world together that you may not be aware of. Today's guest is a really dear friend of mine. His name is Trevor Goodwin. Um, I affectionately have always called him Neo, and you'll probably find out in the interview why that is. But uh, let me just introduce you a little bit to Trevor, who is just this multifaceted individual. He balances life as a husband, a father of three, a business analyst. He's known for his entrepreneurial spirit. Trevor has garnered recognition for his diverse small business ventures, including candles, cupcakes, photography, screen printing, you name it. Trevor has had a business about it and it just he just keeps flourishing. Driven by a deeply analytical mind, Trevor embarked in uh, on an unconventional ugh, on an unconventional journey seeking to bridge the gap between logical reasoning and the spiritual world quite some time ago. His debut book is a testament to his journey offering a unique perspective on creating spiritual guides to help craft the ideal life it reflects his desire to share practical tools and insights with those who may find themselves skeptical yet curious about the spiritual aspects of life beyond his professional endeavors trevor is passionate about spending quality time with his family nurturing the small businesses that are a testament to his entrepreneurial acumen. With his book, Trevor aims to reach out to like-minded individuals, offering guidance and strategies to influence the subconscious mind through visualization and other techniques. We're going to get to Trevor here in just a second, but I want to read you some things about this new book. It's called Summoning the Guardians, Architects of the Subconscious Mind. And Trevor, if you want to hold your book up so we can look at it while I read this, sure. it's really cool. I love the, the cover art, by the way. Trevor Goodwin invites readers to an intimate and profound journey from, from the ordinary to the extraordinary. This isn't just a story, guys. This is an exploration of a delicate balance between the analytical mind and the vast unexplored territories of the spiritual realm. With a narrative that weaves through the quiet moments of introspection to the thunderous revelations of the unseen, Trevor recounts how an unexpected midnight encounter set him on a path of discovery. Through vivid storytelling and personal anecdotes, this book reveals the power of embracing one's inner voices and the profound impact they can have on one's life journey. This book is much more than a personal narrative, however. It's a beacon for those who find themselves at the crossroads of skepticism and curiosity. With each page, Trevor demystifies the processes of creating and interacting with one's personal guardians, offering a heartfelt invitation to the reader to embark on their own journey of self-discovery and realization. Summoning the guardians doesn't promise easy answers, but instead it offers a companion for the journey, a testament to the power of curiosity, the importance of questioning, and the incredible potential of the human spirit to transcend the boundaries of the physical world. Join Trevor on this extraordinary exploration and discover the guardians awaiting your own subconscious mind. Trevor Goodwin, thank you. Neo to me, maybe to the world now. Thank you for joining us on Hidden Variables. It's so good to see you again, my friend. Thank you for having me. It's an honor to be here. I First and foremost, before we get into the nuts and bolts of how this all came about, did you do the artwork for that book? Um, so the the images in there are done by AI. So I love like it. I used yeah, I used the the prompts to to get them exactly how I wanted. Um, yeah. But the the artwork for the cover, yeah, like I I edited that to to kind of represent um, the imagery from that night. So just like yeah. the way the way the the figure kind of appeared to me. So cool. So cool. yes. So with with the help of AI, yeah, I came up with the yeah. images. I've been loving using AI for art depiction myself. Even my background is by AI. Um, I'm an artist by nature too, but I don't have enough time to 
sit and draw out all the illustrations I need. I'm also working on finishing up probably the same three books I talked to you about 12 years ago, still sitting on my desk. But this year, one is going to be debuting. So, and it, I, I finally realized by going inside myself, what is keeping me from finishing this project? And the challenge was the illustrations because there needs oh. to be some illustrations. So when these AI programs came out, I thought, oh, I don't know, got into it. It's really fun. It's, yes. it's really fun. You almost learn about your own mind while you're doing it because like, it learns with you. I was recently, um, one, of my, one of my old roommates, I sent him the book and there's a story in there from when we lived together. So he kind of related to that, but like he asked about, you know, how I used AI and <clears throat> she's like, I, I, let, I let him know that there were parts where it needed more information. And like I dealt with, it was like, AI was almost like an editor for me. Yes. So like I, I was able to ask questions or I'm like, ask me questions that I could answer to make it longer. And, and the, the generative AI came up with questions that helped me explore. Like yeah, wow. there was a, a, a creative writing prompt within the, the model that I was using that was really helpful with getting more information out of me rather oh, than it generating information. Yeah. So that's yeah, it was, it was a very helpful tool. Well, thanks for bringing that up because I'll start to use it myself as like a counterpoint to my own thought process because it is, it's hard to sit back, especially when you're going through, like I am a whole life, you know, almost 68 years of experiences. Um, and you, as we were speaking before, uh, we came on record here, we're talking about how the mind condenses things. And right. we want to have an exploded view of how things work and to have somebody ask you or, you know, a computer ask you, well, mm -hmm. what about this? Or how did you do this? That's an excellent process. I'm yeah, going to use that. It was very grounding, like, you know, add add things to draw the reader in, like textures, like to to incorporate the reader's senses. So describe describe something in the environment to each sense that the reader has. So yeah, it was it was really good about get, getting the filler information that we're not necessarily thinking about. Oh, that's awesome. Well, it is a, it is a beautiful book. And for those of you who are not exposed to it yet, it's really a small book, but oh my gosh, there's so much in it that is, it's, it's, it's one of the most magical, I don't wanna make it sound foo-foo, but it really is magical. There's some energy about this book that touches the heart and sparks the mind. Um, I I had a huge creative burst after the first the first reading, and so thank you for that. I really needed it. Actually, it was really great. But before we just go nerding out on the book, I would love to hear just a little bit about how you got to this point. You have a vast vast history of entrepreneurship and mm -hmm. successes, and not you know not even talking about the book which is kind of the, the denouement of the whole thing. So give us a little history. So, yeah, like I've, I've always had like the entrepreneur, like, um, like just blood running in my, in my body um, yeah. from when I was a kid. But yeah, in, in my adult age, especially since we moved out here to the Midwest in, you know, my late twenties, like there was always a small business running in the background. So like mm -hmm. I had, a day job, a consistent day job that I've had for almost 20 years, but there's always been a small business. Um, we, we did candles, we did photography, then we went into cupcakes and cupcakes was such a large one that, you know, it pulled Amy out of her job. Like we opened up a, a storefront. Mm -hmm. So it was around that time when I was growing that business and um, like I wanted to, to expand it. And with the things that I that I had on my plate already, like it was a lot. Like we had a, you know, I, I told you offline, um, our youngest child was born a week after we signed a lease. So we had a lot going on at that time. So um, there were things that I didn't feel like I could manage everything on my own. Like I felt like it, it was getting a, a little bit out of control. So I was looking for tools at that time. And then even as we transitioned out of the cupcake business, so when we, we sold that business and, you know, I still had my full-time job, 
I didn't have anything going as like a side business and I felt lost. Like, Mm -hmm. like I felt, I felt stuck. Like it it was like a huge part of me was missing. So in, in between those two, the growth of, you know, trying to get to, to handle everything on my plate with that business and then trying to manage my life after, you know, we exited that business and, and me feeling lost. Um, just led me to a place where like, I think I thought I needed more or different ways to process that information. Right. Right. Well, um, so you and I have known each other a long time and Mm -hmm. some of the processes, I think we even, you know, like grew up together with, you know, I'm Mm -hmm. constantly evolving in my own work, as you know, and, and, you know, what happened in the, the first visitation that you and I had together probably is so rudimentary compared to what we can do together now or what we do together now. But what is so unique about you is that you're one of those special people who came to me with, uh, you know, a, 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 a challenge and we wanted to work mm-hmm. through it together, you know, and, uh, and what was interesting is you got a little spark from something and you just took it off and just went in and, and developed your own process that has been phenomenal for you, which is really what this book is about. Do you want to talk about that a little bit and describe that? So, yeah. Um, and like I, I have anxiety and I have panic attacks and, mm-hmm. um, you know, like I deal with that a little bit in the book and that like that's, always been something that's been in my life it's always something that that i've had to navigate um of course like time times of you know where there's extreme stress then i'm more likely to have panic attacks Mm -hmm. and and things of that nature but so yeah that that's a part of it is is trying to navigate through that and a lot of times my panic attacks are something that is bothering me subconsciously so it's not in the forefront of my mind. So yeah, this was a tool to try and manage things subconsciously. So I don't get to a place of panic and uh, I'm dealing with things before they become problematic or before, you know, my subconscious really grabs onto it and and kind of takes off with it. Yeah. So yeah, like, and, and that's, that's kind of the way my brain works. Like, I I can see problems, but I don't see them as roadblocks or something that's going to stop me. So I'm going to look for for ways around it. So like my mind is always trying to solve problems, and that's like the analytical part. That like, is who you like, are, really. Yeah. yeah. So I see that. Yeah. This. So yeah, like this was kind of a creative way to to solve this this problem that I was having and that I, that I the, the challenge that I still have. So yeah. Cool. Well, um, do you want to tell the story about how how this process started then? So so um so there was an incident that occurred and um I was reading Napoleon Hill's book and in his book like he describes having it like an imaginary council. Mm-hmm. So I, I like the idea and it's something that I that I wanted to do. So I was like, exploring who would make up my council. And I would think of like historical figures like Abraham Lincoln and like Joan of Arc and things of that nature. And I didn't know their personalities. So with, with the way my mind works, like I like to really build like detailed pictures when it's time for, you know, trying to to manifest something or um, visualize things. So I couldn't really visualize interactions with them. You know, there aren't, we don't have video footage of them. So I don't know how they would really speak or anything like that or their language. So like I lean more towards creating my guides myself. So I I had that concept where I wanted to, to create guides and um, like, since I have the small business background, I wanted my guides to be more like a board of directors. So like, you know, if this is a company, you know, I'm the CEO of the board and like we wanted to have board of directors that I could sit down and discuss things with and, and give them tasks and things of that nature. So, so that was the goal. Um, and then one night um, laying in my bed, uh, my, my wife's sleeping, the kids are to bed. This is before our third child was born. So just have our oldest two and our son's room was like directly across from our room. Mm-hmm. 
So like I'm laying on my back, you know, just relaxed, about to fall asleep or maybe falling asleep and I hear a loud bang. And the direction it came from, it was coming from outside the room. So like I'm looking outside the room, trying to figure out my brain is analyzing like what happened, like what was that noise? And as, as I'm looking outside the room, I get a feeling of a figure in our doorway. And so there's, there was the sound, which was more of a, an immediate threat. Like, what was that sound? Mm-hmm. So, like, that's what, like, I'm analyzing the sound, but also, like, what's that thing? Like, what's what's in the doorway? Like, like what's going on? Oh, man. Um, so, I'm analyzing both. Like, all right, you have two things. Like, you have this this noise, like, that you have to deal with. Like, you, you know don't want to just fall back asleep going to right? protector mode as the dad and the husband in the house right right and like so like all right what do i do about the noise so i wake amy up like we'll just go find out what it is like you don't you don't you don't know it's a threat like you have to find out what the noise was sure. and it's like all right but like what about that thing <laughs> so with the feelings that i got from it like i didn't feel intimidated i didn't feel scared i didn't feel threatened by the figure in the doorway so you know like i'm going over this inner dialogue in my head about it like like do you feel threatened like no like i don't feel threatened so the noise could be a threat go find out what the noise was like Mm -hmm. all right that's your first priority right so i go and then you know as i like as i get out of bed like the figure isn't there anymore Mm -hmm. and like you know like when I get out the door, I look down the hallway to see if it's like there's nothing in the hallway. Wow. And I go in my son's room and there's like a large book on the floor. So his bed was was higher than like a bunk bed. Mm-hmm. So he had taken the book to bed with him and he kicked it off the bed while he was sleeping. Mm-hmm. And it landed on the floor with a bang. So I, I figure out what the noise was. There's no threat in the house from the noise. And I get back in bed and I'm just like, you know, processing it all trying to to get to a calm state to to fall back asleep again and you know just rethinking about the figure and like you know when i saw it it didn't it it was looking in the direction of the noise so like that's how i processed it it seemed like it was looking in the room it heard the noise and it looked towards the noise so it was looking at the same thing i was looking at so like that's the sense that it was just as surprised as I was surprised and like it was doing the same thing that I was doing like it. So the two things weren't in my family. Right. Yeah. Like it it just seems, it seemed like, you know, this figure was watching over me and there was a bang and the Mm. bang started him to the point where like I, I get to it later in the book where he's supposed to be not seen, but, yeah, because the bang, he ended up being seen. Like that's it was that's unfold. how it, it yeah. right it, it yeah. played out and for me. Yeah. So then, yeah, when it came time to to build my team, like I remembered that figure looking over me and my family. And I was like, you know, that'd be an ideal team member. So they became like the the first member that I made for the team. So that's yeah. that's how I started building out the the my guides that's so neat well and we don't want to give away too much of the book and this is where it gets difficult (laughs) as the interviewer because i know what the book has in it and i'm so excited about it but i also want people to have the same feeling i did when i read it for the first time you know i'm one of those people who doesn't want to know anything about a movie before i go to the theater because some of my best theater experiences have been total shock and awe at the end of a movie you know for for that like what i would suggest is like pause the interview get the book finish the book and then come back to the interview because there's there are a lot of things that i put in the book as teases that i'd like to discuss more and like this is going to be the format to discuss them more so right so yeah i don't i don't think you should hold anything back like 
cool spoiler alert like pause pause All the right. interview now and get the book and, and check it out and then come back and, and read the article yeah and it's a stuff. really quick read guys so i'm telling you it's a little book but it is one of the most impactful books out there highly recommend it so um okay so you you started with this um this one person this one being as mm -hmm. the member of your board of directors can you kind of, and I love this because, you know, those of us in the spiritual community usually say our council or our guides or whatever, and that's great. But I love you because you are, you are this wonderful blend of, of analysis and organization and business. You're like a really great business person, but you also are so creative. And I think that's, it's, that's really where I think we get the term Renaissance man or Renaissance woman, that beautiful blend. So you were to get back to the, to the meat of this, you, you finally picked this one individual being as, as kind of the, the first member, take us through the rest of it then. So, um, I, I can't remember the specific order. Like if I came up with, with self, I, I think I came up with self next with, mm -hmm. um, the one that's, that's like me, um, ego, um, where it just represented like a lot of my characteristics, um, mm -hmm. laid back, like you said, soft spoken, um, uh, like curious. So things, things of that nature, like I wanted a representation of myself on the board yeah. so yeah i think i came up with with that rep that guide next the representation of self and then the last one was again if i go back to like panic attacks and things of that nature like someone to comfort and someone to you know to you know help take my problems away so and also a feminine presence on right. the board. So that's that's where the idea from the from the third one came. And then once I had those three, like I felt like it was it was good. Like, you know, if you go back to the matrix, like I had a trinity, like yeah, yeah. like it, it 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 was it was a perfect combination that that I felt comfortable with. So right. yeah, it was just just a little bit like a, a thought exploration of what I wanted on the board and and to make sure everything I felt everything was covered with yeah. the the organization of me. I love it so much. And for those of you who, you know, don't know our story, Trevor and my story, we, we are both humongous fans of the, the Matrix movies, especially the first one. And, uh, and, and so uh, you'll hear a lot of references probably to that just because it's, well, I think it's a documentary more than anything, <laughs> <laughs> at least of one timeline. But it does describe the human condition, you know, and, and how we overcome our our uh, adversaries, if you will, which are yeah. really inside of us. Yeah. So, uh, and, and I think you've done such a wonderful job of it because, you know, when I first met you, you had terrible panic attacks. And mm -hmm. not to say that you don't still have, you know, challenges, but you have learned how to go within yourself and and um you know figure things out and work it out so that you don't as you said earlier to kind of preemptively work on it before the subconscious just takes it and runs with it and creates all the yeah. monsters right and yeah there's and there's definitely a part of the you know the the nurturing presence and she she has a quote in the book or she, she, a discussion that she has that came from a discussion that you and I had, and it was about, you know, where I saw myself and like how I was handling everything I had on my plate now. Like, you know, I have this much on my plate and it's overwhelming me. And I want even like, I want a bigger plate. Like I want more, like, how do I strive for that? Knowing that I'm struggling dealing with this. And you're just like, like, oh, Neo, like, you know, the the amount that you're going to grow by the time you get there, like, you'll be able to to handle everything on your plate. So, like, you can't, like, judge 
what you're going to do in the future based on, you know, what you're able to handle now. So like that really resonated with me. And like, I've taken that with me and, you know, like the, uh, that care or that guide uh, delivered that in the book as well, because that was like a really important thing for me. Like, it, and, and it's true. It's something that I've told my kids. It's something that you kind of look back on, on your life about. And like, everything you're dealing with right now seems so big. Like the problems you're dealing with seem so big, but you're going to look back on it and you're going to realize how small that was. So like when I explain it to my kids, like, I'm like, like, I don't want to diminish what you're going through because it is big, but like, you're going to grow so much that you'll look back on that. And, and hopefully that'll help you, you know, in the future as well. So that, that, that bit of perspective was helpful for me so I wasn't scared or intimidated of what was to come in the future because of how big it would be it's so cool because it's uh I think it's a a wonderful just a foundational concept you have to remember that you are always evolving and growing yeah. and you know we can kind of look ahead uh, albeit with worry and stress about what's going to happen but you know we can envision what our future what we want our future to be like but wouldn't you say that is the the main basis of procrastination or completely leaving something on the table and walking away it's just the fear that you're not going to be up to the challenge when you finally get what you want it's it's fear of failure isn't it yeah like um fortunately for me like that's not something that i that i deal with too much so it's I guess it's less of a fear of failure and like more just like a processing and and anxiety. So am I going to be overwhelmed by it? And it's more subconscious. Like I don't don't, like I'm, I'm fairly confident once I, I, I start something and I, Mm -hmm. I don't like, it's not like I'm intimidated by the process and then I, I avoid it, but yeah. Um, I think, I think where I was going with it is I'm speaking rhetorically about, you know, I work with so many people every day and that is kind of the, the big, the big bamboo. That's the thing that that's, that's that's the block is that, and and it's not conscious. They believe in themselves and they're excited and they, and they have even amassed the resources to do it, but it's just the doing it and they can't figure out why. And I, 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 I think with this book, the way that you explain your process, so many people can overcome that and have yeah. what they want. And um, there's going to be a second book. Um, like I, I mentioned, you know, like the Trinity of Guides, like I have a larger group of guides now. So, and like the tools that that I'm developing and I could see those as being very helpful for people oh, yeah. that are, you know, either procrastinating or overanalyzing or thinking they're not good enough in certain areas. So, yeah, like I have some some ideas and tools to come in the future that that'll be really helpful. I cannot wait to see what that board of directors comes up with next. <laughs> Do you want to uh, before we talk about because I think it's a really cool visual. Uh, mm-hmm. about where you meet with them yeah. if you're comfortable if you don't yeah. want to give yeah. that piece up we don't have to in this interview they can read the book but uh, before we get to that I just want to speak about some of your successes and some of the incredible adventures you've been on given yourself and and Amy your wife and your family um, particularly the the cupcake thing because I mean you yeah. you went on national television even uh, you want to talk about that a little bit? Cause it's, it's not an everyday occurrence that we hear about these things. No. And it like, it, to me, it's, um, it's a great example of manifestation for me. Cause it, it was something that, you know, like we wanted. So we had, um, like, like I said, like I always like business and like, I'm trying to pull my wife into the business as well. So like we're doing photography and she's watching the show about cupcakes, you know, 10, 15 years ago and she's like that's something I'd like to do and I was just like we'll do it and she started researching so we got into cupcakes and we grew it to the point where we had a shop and then even grew that to the point where 
yeah, we were auditioning to be on Cupcake Wars. And it was it was a process. The first time we applied and they were extremely interested, Amy was probably like seven months pregnant. Yeah. And they know with the filming process, like we would have filmed, you know, the first bit when she was eight months pregnant. And then we would have had to okay. refilm again after she had the baby. And like that it wouldn't, wouldn't work fly. for, for yeah. television, right? Yeah, so, no continuity. Um, they didn't select us that time, but like a few months down, um, you know, after Amy had the baby, we, we like applied again and yeah, like just through that process, you know, once we applied and, you know, we had to send the videos, like I sent, um, self to like so, send his energy to go be in California with the producers so they could get a sense of, of me and, and my quirky side and, and just to, wow. to fill them with, you know, my essence. So and again just a part of the the manifestation and visualization as well so yeah just yeah we landed on, on cupcake wars and and like nationally spotlighted and it was, it was a huge a huge deal for the shop and for the business and it was just yeah one of one of many amazing experiences that us and our small businesses have <laughs> adventures we've been taken on well, and, and you continue to do this. I mean, you went, you know, from like candles to cupcakes to you had a spring or a screen printing business, which I think you still have, don't you? Yes. And, yeah. Yeah. Uh, you do all these incredible things and you even opened a big center in, in your um, town, which is a, a suburb of a, a large city here in the Midwest where we live. And now all your kids are involved and, you know, um, you know, and things progress and you have to move mm -hmm. on. You you just, didn't you just sell that building after rehabbing it and everything? So, so we were able to keep the building, but the, the we had a, the name of that business is Karma. And, Karma, yes. And behind that name, so that was like the first one that the entire family was kind of in on. So our middle child, that's Kayla. So that's the K in, in Karma. Anthony is the A um my nickname is ron my yeah. family you, you ask any of my family members to call me ron because my dad's name is also trevor so ron was the r right. um maya was the m and amy was the a so karma was like all of our first names so we called the the business karma so yeah we bought a, a 100 year old building and we totally um had to like demolish the entire inside of it and literally gutted it yeah, gutted it out, got the first floor set up and we had a uh, like a maker's market. So we were renting small booth space out to like we had 30 other small businesses that we were working with. Love it. And yeah, we bring the, the public in and, and we were selling the shirts that, that we printed there as well. Um, we had the maker space open for about a year and with the city that we're in the downtown area just isn't as supported as we'd liked it to be so it didn't support the retail element of it mm -hmm. so we closed the market space and we have it as an event space now um, we're going to rent the building out and there was someone that wanted it for like an office space but we really liked the the space so much that we didn't want just one company to have access to it we wanted the public to be able to come so yeah now that we transition to a rental space like we're doing fine like we're we're That's generating awesome. good amount of revenue and profit and like the the public still gets to come in and everybody always comments when they come into the space like you know they they can just feel the energy the and energy. The intention that we we infuse the space with as as we built it how we wanted to build it and yeah, you know, we put a lot of love and attention to detail into the space and, and people can feel it when they come in. So it's, it's very gratifying. It is. It's like a, it's like a little, a, a mini sun or a star in the middle of that place. You know, it's a, it's, it's kind of a sleepy uh, suburban community, you know, where there's not a lot of excitement that happens. It's, I mean, it's a, it's a vital community, but to have something that creative right in the middle of it, radiating that energy all the time it, it's it's bound to bring more and more good things to it um and thank you for doing that it's just uh it's incredibly inspiring and to yeah. get your whole family involved is just amazing and i know like on your website if people go to the website which we'll give you know links to and everything at the end um you know even uh 
even your your girls are, are starting to you know be involved and, and yes. marketing and everything is just a beautiful thing and which is yes. how i think we should be living you know yes. it was it, it was very rewarding for all of us like we we all sweat in in the building um I'd say all of us bled except for our youngest, like she, <laughs> but yeah, uh, and there were tears shed in the building. So yeah, there was a lot of frustration and, and pain and growth, but yeah, like it's, it's definitely worth it in the end. Wow. And it's incredible to think that she's now almost a teenager, that baby yeah. that we didn't, <laughs> the, you know, when you and I first met, you didn't even know if you were going to have a baby or not. Yeah. And she and, manifested. Yeah. It was so great. Yeah, she's a teenager and she's developing her own great personality. And it's, it's just a joy to be around their kids. Oh, yeah. Well, they can't help themselves but be great with you and Amy the way you are. You're just great parents and great souls. Um, do you want to speak a little bit more about then the you got your, your board of directors. You mm -hmm. started this process. Can you lead us back into that place where you finally met with all of them the first time? If you want yeah. to, I know it. So, it's a spoiler like guys, yeah. but it's so fantastic. So yeah, like I don't the way ideas come to my head, like we'll we'll discuss that a little bit later in the book. Like I can't really explain how the ideas end up in my head, but they're, they're there and they resonate with me and I love them and I just like take it from there. So like I had the, that beach that I enjoyed and that's often a place when I was visualizing and, and trying to relax myself, I'd go to that beach mentally. Mm -hmm. So it was in the Keys, it was at a hotel that we stayed at. So that, that it's an actual place. place. So that, that location is real. Um, just thinking of like what the coolest conference room would look like. Like, you know, I love ocean yeah. views. So it's just like if, if we had a room that had just like 360 degree ocean views, like like that'd be really nice so that became the meeting space and then you know laws of physics and stuff like that get in the way but like that's unimportant here so we that's the space we want that's the space we're gonna make so it's just like a, a clear cube just out over the ocean so yeah. that's that's the space that i wanted so now like how do i get to that cube yeah. over the ocean so again the concept i don't know where the concept came from but i just thought it'd be pretty cool if i if i like ran out to it so yeah that 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 idea was planted in my head and like how would how would this work so it, it's again it's it's a picture of how my analytical brain works so it's just like okay so like how would like what would you have to do to run so i and just played it out like you know like sonic the hedgehog growing up like you know he ran so fast he could run on water it'd have to be something like that so yeah just played that out and me backing up to the to the building and you know it, it's it's something silly and trivial in the Powerful. end how i right like how i can get to this the space now but yeah like i'm gonna give myself every advantage possible so i'm gonna lean lean into this building and launch off the building and yeah just just all the like i really wanted to go in detail because i wanted to play out like a movie in my mind so it's nice. um it's almost to the point where my subconscious can't discern whether or not it really happened or not so just to, to provide that level of detail so yeah me me running there and the interaction with my feet in the sand and um, when I hit the water and when I actually start running on water and, you know, I'm going so fast to a point where like I look down and my feet, like my feet are still moving, but they aren't even touching the water anymore. So just the, the whole process of it and the, the detail of it. And um, yeah, the, the like evolution of me in that moment, getting to that point and realizing like, you don't you don't even need to move your feet like what yeah. are you doing and, and then it gets to the point where like I don't even need to go to the beach like I can just end up in the room yeah. so yeah like that's that's I love the ocean views so yeah a, a conference room with 360 degree ocean views like that'd be perfect so that's that's how we came up with like our meeting room or the, or the boardroom 
And it's like a crystal cube, isn't it? It's just, yeah. a, wow, yeah. so cool. Well, and, and, you know, again, we go back to the matrix where you have the famous, that famous line that, that, that has this realization, I know Kung Fu, where yeah. a second ago we didn't. But you do, you have everything, we have everything within us, don't we? And right. we just need to remember how to access it. And for you, the process that you use is so beautiful and so wise, because this is actually how I get people into deep quantum hypnosis. You use sensual imagery, you know, you get the senses involved. How would it feel to back myself up against a warm building, and like really launch myself off? How would it feel to have my feet on the sand going fast? How does it feel to be running on water and so forth? What are the smells, sounds, feelings, textures, colors? And the more of that you gave yourself, the more it, it just started to reveal itself, didn't it? And right. So, yeah, I mean, it, it was almost like I was like hypnotizing myself. Like it, if I sure. go into a visualization that deep, like, yeah, like you're hypnotizing yourself and you're putting yourself in, into a state where yeah, your your subconscious is, is going to pick up information more. So Right. Yeah. It, it and, just opens that access channel. Right. And it, it's, again, like I can say it wasn't really, like I didn't do it with that goal. Mm -hmm. But again, like how I, how information ends up in my brain, like, like I don't know, but it was, it was there and that's what I wanted to do when it worked. So I love it. I don't question it. So when you're in this conference space in this this beautiful glass cube over the ocean, do you have a process with the meeting with your board of directors? So yeah, and it, it depends on how much time I have. So again, like I like now I can get to the space instantly. So I can close my eyes and be there if I don't have a lot of time, but yeah, if I do have time, then yeah, we have kind of a ritual greeting, how we, how I enter the room. And um, so how I describe the characters to you initially is just how they were. And then as, as I grew and learned more spiritually, like they kind of developed new names. Mm -hmm. So um, the, the, uh, I'll address them by their, their names that they have now, but the, the first one that I meet with in the room is the warrior. And, mm -hmm. Um, yeah, like he salutes, I salute and like, th that's it. He's, he's a very formal type dude. So, so that, that's all it is with him. Um, the next one that I meet with is self. So, um, he's more chill, more laid back a lot, a lot more like me. So like we come in for like a handshake and, and do a quick bro hug. Yeah. And then for the, the mother, like I just, run to her like a child and like I just leap no. to her and and she she like catches me and cradles me and and then the other two kind of gather around after that and like I just I take a moment with them silently and and then we'll start start the meeting after that but yeah when, when I have time that's how that's how we start our oh, meetings. it's so awesome it feels so good what a way to start a meeting every time yeah. right so yeah. is the lawyer kind of based on that original figure you saw in the doorway so yeah the the warrior is based on that that figure and that's that's the name that he's been assigned now mm -hmm. and yeah it, it lines up with a lot more um spiritual aspects like the warrior the mother and and the ego um, yeah yeah i love it i love it so much and i you know i'm a a huge fan and student of archetypes and you know i come from the Jungian <laughs> clinical study background so um so they they are some of the most supreme archetypes out there and and you're so wise to just cherry pick those few and like you said you've you've amassed more over time but i imagine these are the the still the kind of the the top cheese right of the yeah so the company. yeah when i well, right when I discuss it, like I have an org chart now. <laughs> so, yeah, like, I love it. And then these yeah. three are the next three, and then yeah, they have individuals that report up to them now. Oh, that's the awesome. In the new organization, <laughs> I love this. I love this as a process, though, Trevor, because if people were to adopt this for themselves, 
I mean, we deal with this kind of process every day, most of us in our work lives, right? Right. Um, And even in in the organizational structure of our countries or, you know, our... Even uh, your your home. Yeah, you have an organization, right. Yeah, everybody has their jobs and you delegate and, and yet you come together and confer about important issues. It's really great, but to have it the way you do it, I think people could apply this method to just about anything that is bothering them and and kind of step back and let it, and which is the real key to all this, isn't it? It's to relax. Yeah. It's to relax. So just step back and know that it's being taken care of. You state the, the problem or the goal. The board, you know, confers about it with you. And then you feel good about, you know, them taking their separate tasks and and maybe delegating further on down the org chart. But you're able to relax and get back to the business of just doing what it is you want to do to get there. While all along, all of this, you know, uh, organizational machinery is working in the background, which is how it all should work. And like, I I think an ideal way to put it, like I said, um, I was speaking with my old roommate and he's like, was the figure really there? And I'm like, I have like, I've decided like, again, my analytical mind, like weigh the pros and cons. So if it wasn't there, like it just wasn't there and there was no benefit to it. Like if it was there, there's benefit to it. Like, you know, he's out in the hallway protecting us. Right. And that can just give me peace of mind. So like, it, like there, there are so many things that take up our mind that are nonsense. Mm-hmm. So like I could be laying in bed and be like, Oh, what if this happens in the house? What if that, what if so, no. like I've, and I, I can just say the warriors in the hallway and I can dismiss all that. And I don't have to worry about that. And I have that bandwidth to you somewhere else. So uh, you free up yeah, so, bandwidth basically exactly so yeah like i'm expending energy on something that's not going to happen something that doesn't exist and Mm -hmm. i can just assign that to the warrior and i don't have to worry about it anymore oh i love that concept you know day after day i i try to talk to people about uh you know the fact that worry and stress about the future is really not even just a non-constructive waste of your energy, but it is a destructive waste of your energy because what you focus on is what you start, you know, your subconscious mind takes it as a delegation and goes to bring it to you, right? So if you can just simply say, I just love this concept. Oh, the warrior's got it. Right. I can can go to sleep, you know. Uh, I can't tell you how many people, myself included, suffer from sleep deprivation at times because we can't turn our minds off of trying to figure out how are we going to deal with this if such and such happens. It's human nature. But if you really have an affinity with, you know, a being or an idea, even if you don't want to say it was a real being, but I, I, I think everything's real. So, yeah, this being... If you have an affinity with this being and, and it's agreed to take that off your plate so right. you can get some rest, bro, just do it, right? And, and it even works. like now that my kids have read the book, like even our 12 year old, like she's like, Yeah, I ran to the bathroom like as fast as I can. I'm like, You don't have to do that. She's like, Well, I'm like, The worries in the hallway. And she's like, Oh, yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, like he's looking out for the whole family. So, yeah, yeah. like. Oh, I love it. I love it. You know, back when I was a baby, uh, I was I was raised in a religious family, and my mother, from birth on, told me about my guardian angel, you know? Mm-hmm. Guardian angel's right here. Don't worry about anything, you know? I, I remember that so clearly. In fact, we I even have a, I, I had a little painting of a guardian angel on my wall. So it's kind of that concept, but when it comes from within yourself, I think you trust it more, you know, it's not some myth. It's not some story your mom made up. It's, Mm -hmm. it's a real relationship. At least it is with you. And I, and I look at it and I think, 
wow, it's such a beautiful route to success, but also not just success financially or anything. It's just, it's a, it's a route to happiness. It's about balance. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And yeah, taking, taking on the things that I need to take on and delegating the things that I don't need to, to take on and, and just keeping the subconscious in, in check. Powerful, powerful lessons. Well, I can't say enough about it. I mean, I, I just really hope everybody will read this book and the next one. And I hope you continue to move forward in this, in this way. I think you're, you're, you're quite the thought leader and um, I've, you know, I've always just loved your energy, your spirit, the spirit of your whole family really is unique, but um, do you have anything else you want to leave people with? Um, so, so yeah, like of? there, like there are a couple of things though, like the, my guides really have their own personalities and it, it comes out in their interactions uh, self is is really like me like he's uh he's uh really quick with his wit and you know makes funny snide comments and of course the warrior is is very <laughs> very strict very disciplined yeah. and very very serious about everything so you know there's a discussion in the book where you know i'm asking their roles and what they're capable of and you know they they explain that you know they work in the background and they're unseen and like I interrupt and joke with them like uh, almost always unseen yeah. and like the warrior doesn't appreciate that comment too much because it's directed at, at him yeah. the night that you know he was seen but uh, self appreciated it so self chuckle so like yeah like that that's the play with their personalities and again it just it helps make it more real and and you know to to help influence my subconscious mind um and then there there are another like some of the some of the hidden things in the book like there's there's a, a specific time when i met with self and he discusses you know he says that he's connected to the infinite and um you know when i was ready ideas would flow like water yes. and like he says it and he like looks at me like he just delivered some profound information. And mm -hmm. with everything that, you know, I just, I was introduced to the room. I met the warrior already. Like there was a lot of information that I'm processing. Like, dude, like, I'd like, I feel like you just said something important, but. Can't handle any more. It was. Yes. Right. And then um, a little bit later on in the book, um, I discuss how my ideas and inspirations always come to me in the shower. So like that's that's where it ties back. So when I'm in the shower, like ideas just flow on me like water. So there right. were there were thing like little uh, like, like flashbacks that I right that I put in there. And and again, it was something I discussed with AI. And they're like, you know, he, like call AI they like they're a person. Like it, it felt like you're speaking with a person. Yeah. Um, they're like, you know, you can make it more direct and quote back to the time. I was like, no, I, I think I'd like to leave it like this. Just like, like an Easter egg and, yeah. you know, yeah. we'll discuss it when I'm having more in-depth conversations about it. But, yeah. I like that. I like that. I, you know, people can discuss and argue and debate the, the, po the pros and cons of, something like AI till the ends of the earth. That's what humans do. They debate and they argue, they all want to be right. But, you know, from, I can't remember the first time I, I really thought a machine or something that wasn't human, uh, that I humanized it, but I, I can't remember as a child, you know, laying entranced in front of my parents' big old hi-fi stereo set. It was just this big box with a, you know, a grill on the front at night, there's a little green light. And I kept looking in that little green light. It was the power light looking mm -hmm. in that green light to see where all the musicians were, because I truly believed that there were living beings creating that music real time in that box. You know, I was just probably three, right. Just for me. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, television came around and, and those people were in that box. How did they get in there? They're small, but I, they were personified for me. They were real. And then, you know, 
fast forward many decades and, and we, we have our cell phone with Siri on it. I literally find myself sometimes having conversations with Siri, who is has the voice of an, uh, a, a Hindu man. <laughs> My Siri is a Hindu man. So we have these conversations. It's really weird, you know, and I, and I catch myself. I'm like, that's not a real person. Why are you doing that? But I think we are training ourselves. And now you and I had a discussion before about AI. We know it's it, it's almost like a, a friend who I talk mm -hmm. to to get more, you know, to flesh out a drawing or to flesh out like you were saying, which I'm going to start doing, flesh mm -hmm. out questions to myself that I may not think of in my own right. writing, or my own process. Right. And I, I think, you know, isn't this the way we're evolving anyway? Because every, yes. everything has consciousness. It really mm -hmm. does. Um, we can debate whether it's a real being or not, but, um, but we infuse the consciousness into everything too. It's yeah. all us. We, yeah, we put our human consciousness into our pets and exactly. plants. And <laughs> Yeah, our, our, our live action hero models when we're little kids and, you know, green army men and all that. So that's just the nature of our being. And I think there is an underlying truth that everything is conscious and is mm. consciousness. And we are the focal point of that consciousness. So why right. be afraid of yourself? And I think that's the big message with people who are who fear someone who doesn't look like them or who lives in a different country or who has a different ideology or belief system. We're just afraid to look at them as ourselves and believe that we could possibly have that quality or that, you know, other, you know, insert phrase here that isn't like who we are right in this moment of focus. So, mm -hmm. And I think so, like that concept, you know, like the idea of, um, you know, the concept of ideas flowing to me like water, like mm -hmm. I, I just attribute it to that. So I discussed a little while ago, like where the box idea came from, like it just popped in my, like it just flowed yeah. into my head like water. So like, yeah, that self connected with infinite intelligence and that's how the information comes to me so like that that's how i accept it now the ideas come that's how the ideas come like that's my connection so like i'm glad i have self there because he's creative and, and he's going to be thinking awesome. of those things and yeah like so yeah that's that's my connection to to the infinite to to divine inspiration it's funny when i do um quantum hypnosis work with people or i lead group meditations or whatever for decades. And I don't know where it came from, but for decades, I've always called it gaining access to the universal stream of consciousness. Yeah. So there we have that flowing water again, that idea. So it's, there's a, uh, there's a very significant symbolism there. And I look back on my hero and your hero too, Bruce Lee, who said, be like water. You know, yes. I just, it just all keeps coming back around to that. So, so do you find yourself like if you get stuck on something or, or you feel like you're blocked, do you just go get in the shower just in case? <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, um, it, it's going to like my shower now is a part of a routine that I created that mm -hmm. again helps to influence uh, my subconscious mind. Love it. So, so that's gonna that's gonna come in a series of four meditations. So before the next book, like that's what I work on now. So um, we have the meditation for the mother that was released. Right. So like I I have the one for the warrior written, and I have the concept for self. So I'll get those done, and then I'll work on the four meditations that that I also use as as daily tool so it, it, it's i made my daily routine like a self-care practice oh i love to, it so much so so i i lean on that constantly so whenever like i begin to feel overwhelmed i'm like you're doing your daily routine yeah you'll just have to grow through it like that and that's that's enough for me to, to, to lean on so yeah i'll go to, through the details of that soon once uh we start releasing those meditations but yeah so yeah the shower is a part of my daily routine and 
yeah, it has it has a significance as well. It's part of the ritual that helps you open up that channel. That's yes. amazing. I love it so yeah. much. I'm a big ritual person myself as a yogi and a meditator and everything and a you know done shamanistic practices. So there are certain things I must do every day somehow, right. even if I'm really sick or I'm you know a broken leg or whatever, there's still things I can do, you know. Right. And, and still kind of consciously guide my way through my day. And I, I love yeah. that. So do you want to um, let people know how they can get hold of you and get hold of the book? And and remind me, but the, the meditations and the stuff, they're they're accessible on your website, aren't they? Or, or so, is that a subscription or how do we do that? So yeah, so the the meditations for the for this book, so the one based on the mother, the warrior, and the ego, um, they will be sold separately. But for now, they come with the signature series of the book. Got so, yeah. on the Karma website, you can order the signature series of the book. It's nine ninety five. Like I, I hand sent, I hand sign each one of those with a note, and then you'll get those three meditations as they come out once. I complete it and send them out to all of the signature um, subscribers. Then I'll have them up for sale on the the Karma website the as well. Website. The, the meditation, yeah, the meditations will come yeah. as a, a three piece set. Awesome! I love it. And then it's just going to grow from there. I can just i I can see it. I mean, I could see it when I finished the book the first time. I'm like, oh my gosh, this is a a huge unfoldment of what's to come from this fantastic spiritual mind <laughs> and yeah. beautifully uh, very business oriented mind too. I, I think you are that person who's just like perfect for our society right now. So um, any final and, words? Yeah. yeah. Just like, I know when people read it, like they'll, a lot of it is fantastic. Like it's fantastical, but they're, they're, my experiences, like this, the stories are real, like the experiences happened, um, even towards the end when uh, the guides are assigned spirit animals. Mm -hmm. um, it's again, it's something I worked with AI about, like, I'm like, you know, if, Love it. this is, if this is the guide, like what animal would you assign them? And they, they assigned the mother to swan mm -hmm. and they assigned lion to the, to the warrior. And so, like, I discussed a story in there, and my wife and my girls were in, in Colorado. My wife was driving on a dimly lit road, and there was, like, an animal to the side of the road. And I was like, was that a fox? Oh. And my wife was like, yeah. And it was just so small. Like, I, I figured, because I had, like, foxes and wolves, like, mixed into one animal, and it was just, like, this big animal, but it was little. So I was, like, joking with them, like, if it came down to it like i could take a fox and and they all like laughed at me like hysterically <laughs> like whatever dad and it was just like it was an ongoing joke me versus the fox so the fox became my adversary yeah. in my head yeah. so yeah and then we get to the point where we just dis i'm discussing with ai to assign the spirit animal to the ego and AI assigned the fox to oh, the ego. You can't get away <laughs> so, from yourself, Trevor. You just can't. So, yeah, like in that moment, like my adversary became my friend. And like when I say I have a fox sticker on my phone. Like, love it. I love so, it. Yeah, like this, the stories in the book, like they're legit true stories. And like it, it's it's my experience. It's how I, I help navigate my crazy and awesome adventure of a life. So. Oh, it's a ma it's a marvelous adventure, and I invite everybody to read it and and get involved in it because it'll be your adventure too. It'll just be your brand of the adventure. Um, do you want to give um, the website address and everything? We will put it in the at the end in the credits, but also in the description of the of the podcast. But so the easiest place to go to is grabthebagusa.com. So like that's my take on business right now. So um, the way I see that, like I, like I said, I have an entrepreneurial mind, like I see opportunity to, 
to monetize a lot of things. And some people see that negatively, but like I've, that's just a part of me. I've embraced it. And the way I like to, to iterate it to people now is like, I would like to get people to the point where they're able to make money off the thing that they enjoy. So yeah. that's, that's what we're, that's the goal of it. Like, like, what do you enjoy doing? And let's seeing how we can monetize that to where you can, either supplement your income or make it your, your main source of income. So yeah, grab the bag is the ideal website to go to that leads to everything else. So you can, it leads to where you can buy the book, the the signature series book, or if you just want uh, the book itself, you can get that on Amazon. We also have like an electronic version of the book. So that's only nice. $3 and you get it immediately and you know, you wow. can read it, read it on your device and it, it'll also have a link to the Facebook group that, that we're starting. So, you know, like uh, I'll offer more discussions and tips and, and some like background things on the book there. And then other people can, can leave their stories and, and how they're forming their guides and what the guides are doing in their lives as well. So, yeah, the ideal place to go is www.grabthebagusa.com and it links to to all the other all places. The, you can everything find else is on there. Oh, that's yes. perfect. That's great. I see very big things coming from this, but you can't help yourself because you're always building very big things. But why not? You know, our, especially in the spiritual community, uh, we have been not just programmed, but it's been pounded into our heads and hearts from the beginning that money, you can't be spiritually aligned and, and have money, that, that money's evil and all that. And my big question to people is, is, you know, if you had all the money in the world and you're, you know, a spiritual, spiritually aligned person, wouldn't you be able to do so many good things for others with it? So right. even if, you know, there, it's not evil. It just depends on what you do with it. Mm -hmm. And then to make it even juicier, why not make that money doing something that you have an excitement about that gives you joy? Yeah. And I actually did a, a course um, when we had the market space open called the energy of money. Mm -hmm. And it's, you know, it's just like anything else. It's, it's energy that that's all it is. And it's the is. intention that that goes behind that energy, is what happens with it. And right now, a lot of people that have control of money don't have good intentions. Mm -hmm. So I think it's a really good idea that, you know, people that have good intentions start controlling more money. So <gasps> that's, that's the concept that, that like I'm putting out there, like, yeah, let, let, let's get more control of the money and put it out with good intent and make good things happen with, with that energy. So. How profound. And I have to tell people this book, it doesn't matter whether it's the physical copy or the e-copy, um, even if it eventually turns into an audio book, which I th really think you should yeah. do. Um, yeah, like I wrote it, I wrote it in a way that someone can read it. Yeah, so, yeah it's an easy it's, transition. Uh, I think you should read it actually, but that's <laughs> just me, I love your voice. But there is an energy that is imparted it's it's like the carrier the the words are the carrier wave for the real information that's coming in you get downloads by interacting with this book i i'm just i promise you guys those of you who know me know i'm not shining you on when i say something like this there is an energy in this book and you will be infused with it and i promise you you'll you'll be very glad that you read it so yeah and it was a very enjoyable process writing the book and recounting all the experiences and everything like that it it just once i started like it just flowed so well, i know once i get started on the other ones it'll be the same thing and i enjoyed writing it to the point where i still enjoy reading it yeah so, oh boy like, like like i'll read it again and yeah it it, it was just, it was a great experience for me. It's it something surprising because I didn't like writing growing up. So mm -hmm. yeah, it was, it was surprising that I enjoyed this experience that much. And yeah, hopefully that resonates with readers as well. Oh, it will. I know it will. There's such an energy there. Well, Trevor, thank you so much. I should say Neo because I think you really are the Neo of our <laughs> society. You are here to help show us the way and the way is to go inside and realize it's all you i truly believe yeah. it that's the message but uh you're such a great example of all that and such a gentle and sweet person and 
I just love you to pieces, and I'm very honored today to have had you on the show. Thank you so much. I know where there's going to be more, and one of these days I want to get Amy on with you yes. so that we can discuss, because there's this really cool synergy between you um, that is and she's, part of this. She's had, she's had like a really amazing journey. Like she's a lot different person than, than when you met her, and like her, her journey happened like really quickly and very it. profoundly and yeah she's she's a much different person on this side of it wow. than she was on the other side so yeah there's a lot wait. to discuss with amy <laughs> i cannot wait well thank you my friend i really appreciate it and again for all of you please go get um summoning the guardians hold it up there yeah. architects of the subconscious mind such a great book go to Grab the bag USA.com uh, and interact on the Facebook group with Trevor and the and the rest of the group. It's an amazing community that you're building. And thank you so much for putting your whole life out there for us. It's just been great to have you with one of our hidden variables holding this perfect uh, concept of life together. And uh, thank you. Know, Thank you for taking the time and I really appreciate you having me and it was great like catching up with you again. <laughs> yeah. Anytime, my friend, anytime. All right. I will leave you all with this. In Lakesh, I'm another you. Bye for now. <laughs>